It doesn't matter if you're shopping in person or online, you're likely to find yourself unknowingly up against an invisible force that's working against you. And that force is over a half century's worth of consumer behavior research that has one goal and one goal only, making it easier to separate you from that hard-earned cash in your pocket. Because it turns out, our human brains have quite a few vulnerabilities in the subconscious mind that we're almost entirely blind to, and a well-researched and executed sales and marketing plan is what finds ways to exploit these vulnerabilities and use your own psychology against you. But luckily, the best defense that you can have against it all is to understand the psychological tricks they're taking advantage of. And the next time you're out buying something, you can see how the facade all works and make a more informed purchase. That's right, you want to buy something because you wanted to buy it, not because someone tricked you into spending more than you wanted to. So let's dive right in and unpack some of the simple and sinister psychological tricks that companies use to get you to buy more stuff. But first, instead of using a psychological trick, I'm just going to straightforwardly ask you to smash that like button real quick for the YouTube algorithm, because that's how you can help make this channel and community grow. Let's begin with some visual pricing tricks because you're bound to have seen these everywhere, but you may not know the extent of the science behind it. You're likely to have noticed, and probably just accepted as common practice by now, that most prices you see end in 9 and 99. But what you might not know is that there's a well-studied phenomenon behind why it works called the left digit effect in price cognition, which tells us that your brain perceives the price of the product based off the leftmost digits. So your brain sees the price as $8 and $7.99 as having completely different values, even though there's only a one cent difference between the two prices. That's because the way our brains calculate numbers, you may remember place values from when you were in elementary school, there's a drastically significant difference in the value the further left you go on the chart. A great illustration of this technique in practice, by a company with a multi-billion dollar research budget, is to head on over to Apple's storefront, and you'll notice that almost every single product on their website ends in 9 or 99. Let's adjust for that $1 difference here on the 2021 lineup. It doesn't look quite as appealing of a price. The iPhone 12 Pro is actually $1,000, the iPhone 12 is $700, then we have $600 and $400, and we know that it's true when we see $699 that it's actually $700, but it just feels different. And that's the left digit bias in full effect. What about a trick that we may be a little bit less aware of? Let's jump into the decoy effect. Imagine that you're at the movie theater, and you're heading up to the concession stand to buy some popcorn for you and your date, and when you get to the counter, you're greeted with three options, a small for $4, a medium for $7.50, and a large for $8. Your first thought is probably, who on earth would pay $7.50 for a medium when the large is only 50 cents more for far more popcorn? Here's the simple trick. The movie theater didn't give you the medium option so you'd buy a medium. They gave you the medium option so you'd spend $8 instead of $4 and its sole purpose is to distract you from the fact that the large is twice in price as the small. And if you were to just put those two options right next to each other, you'd notice that the price difference is far larger than you thought and you might opt for a cheaper option instead. But it doesn't always have to be the middle option as the decoy. Let's say you're stopping at the store on your way to a dinner party and want to pick up a bottle of wine. You're not a wine expert and you're unfamiliar with the brands that they carry, but here's your options. You have a bottle for $10, you have a bottle for $30, and a bottle for $60. Your thought process might go like this. Well, I'm sure not spending $60 for a table wine, but I also don't want to risk buying a really cheap bottle for $10 and have it taste like paint thinner, so I think the middle option is my best bet here. In this situation, the decoy is the $60 bottle of wine, because without any reference price, a $30 bottle of wine is three times more expensive than the cheapest bottle. But when framed with the $60 bottle, it's now 50% cheaper than the most expensive option, and the price difference becomes less drastic. But what about tricks that aren't price related? What if I told you that not only where products are located in a store, but the entire layout of a store isn't designed to be the most convenient for you, but to get you to browse as many products as possible? Ever notice that almost all the grocery stores you've ever gone to have milk, eggs, and meat all in the far corners of the store? Let's pull up a map of a supermarket real quick. The reason you frequent a grocery store at least once a week or so is because perishable items have a brief shelf life. So, retailers can assume and calculate purchase recurrences. 
So by placing all of your perishable foods, fruits, vegetables, bread, meat, and dairy, all on opposite sides of the building, it guarantees that you'll make a path around the entire circumference of the store, maximizing the exposure to products that you might not have originally came to get. Have you ever been sucked into an aisle on your way from the meat section to the dairy section and then zigzagged your way around to see if maybe you forgot to list down something that you needed before you left? That's by design. Now, let's bring up one more example of a trick played on the subconscious mind that's on a different end of the spectrum, and that's the loss aversion principle. This is a cognitive bias that gives us the tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains. So, what that means is, the idea of losing something gives you a more powerful response than by gaining something of equivalent value. How's this put into practice? Well, let's hop back over to Apple's website again for an example, but this time we'll pull up Apple Watches. You'll see all the features and lack of features neatly set out for you to compare and contrast. What this does for you on a subconscious level is hint at the features that you may be missing out on and what you might use those features for if you selected a lower model. So if you're comparing the Series 3 to the SE, you might notice right away that you won't have cellular capabilities if you select the Series 3 and all of the inconveniences that that may bring to you. You may also notice right out of the gate that the SE doesn't have the capability for always on display if you don't buy the 6. And that seems mildly frustrating, so now you're considering the 6 having never originally intended to. You could revert back to the second psychological trick we talked about in this episode and ask yourself, which of these three do you think might be the decoy? Understanding that almost everything you encounter when it comes to buying something is by design is your first step in being able to see through some of the tricks that are being played on you based on consumer psychology, because it's most beneficial to you to be able to use more sound reasoning than allowing subconscious tricks to drive your purchasing decisions. All of that begins with learning just a little bit more every day. And one of the best ways you can do that is to scroll on down and hit the subscribe and notification bell on this channel. It's a growing community and we'd love to have you around. Don't forget to leave your ideas for questions you want answered in upcoming videos in the comment section below. And like always, obliterate the like button for the YouTube algorithm.